all physios are very well aware that a very large proportion of backs that come through their door have no identifiable diagnosis or pathology. I propose to discuss a new perspective on highlighting what I believe the possible causes for a sore back are when there's nothing that we can find. There's nothing wrong with the MRIs, there's nothing wrong with the scans, the CT scans, there's nothing wrong with the x-rays. The patient moves normally, but they're in pain. First of all, the basics of how a spine works normally, both as the overall structure and segmentally what makes a spinal segment operate and then how it doesn't operate and then what we do about it and then what the patient does about it. So here we have the lovely human spine straight we hope from behind pretty well although leg length difference does sometimes come into it as does idiopathic congenital scoliosis. Very heavy head sitting on top five kilo heavy head here we have the, the side view of the spine, very important, this lovely S-bend. Remember that the sacral angle is about 50, 50 degrees and that sets the stage for this S-bend rising of the spine, rising out of the pelvis like a cobra out of a basket, supporting and balancing this heavy head on top. That S-bend is very important. It fulfills two vitally important functions, one dynamic, one, one more static. The dynamic function of the S-bend is that it works like a spring. And the more spr coils there are in a spring, the, the stronger it is as a spring. The more curves there are in a spine, the better it works as a shock absorber. The very, very strong anterior longitudinal ligament runs down the front of the vertebral bodies here. The vertebral bodies are the main load bearing part which I get to uh, in a moment but the anterior longitudinal ligament is the, is, the, is the strongest ligament in the spine that actually s with heel strike the spine the spine bows more into more lordosis and that anterior longitudinal ligament stops that happening so on heel strike there's a bowing and then on elastic recoil the spine comes up again straighter again so you have this lovely romping gait along the pavement with your head bobbing along on top. So that gives, if you like, the brain as jangle free an existence as is possible. The way that the, the, the spinal S-bend works effectively more statically is that it stacks you more easily or more effortlessly when you're sitting, which we get to later. So now here we have the individual spinal segments, the front compartment and the back compartment. This is the, 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 the coronal view, the vertebral body at the front with the intervertebral disc sandwiched in between all the way up as we know, and then the back compartment which is largely made up of the facet joints. Now the front compartment's main role is to be a load bearing strut which is bendable because the main function of the human lumbar spine is to bring this upper thinking, um, doing, clever part of the body to workable heights. So we have, in between the front and the back compartment, we have the neural canal formed by this hole, so that superimposed on itself one-on-one, -on -one, you've got this long tube, which houses, as you know, the spinal cord, which hangs down from the base of the brain like a, a long plait, with with bundles, filaments, making up the spinal nerve roots coming out between the front and back compartment at every intervertebral level through the intervertebral foramen. Now the intervertebral discs are the shock absorbers between the bony bits and uh, here it is, this beautiful an uh, nucleus pulposus which is largely water and then you have these wraparound walls going in all directions all around this bubble of fluid at the center which is the annulus fibrosus, made up of 12 to 15 layers of diagonally aligned mesh alternately in the opposite directions.